Well, it's now been almost two weeks since I've had this Mustang, and I just thought maybe I would do a short video and uh, tell you how the thing is. Um, really runs good. I've, I've been a drag racer for a long time, since I was 16 years old, so I have to laugh on the internet when I hear people talking about how it's scary fast. It isn't scary fast at all, but I suppose if you're driving your mama's Honda all the time it probably is but it runs pretty good and definitely a nice car um, haven't had any issues at all with it I put about 300 miles or so on it now and I'm gonna drive it to work every day as long as it doesn't rain and which gets to be kind of a pain because I get pretty dirty at work so now I have to change my clothes and I'm in there cleaning my arms all up real good and everything because I want to get it all messed up but um, probably the only thing that I don't like about this car is that shifter and if you google before actually before I bought this thing I googled 2014 GT Mustang problems and the only complaint I've heard from anybody is the way these things shift and it's a combination of that shifter and then also the release point of the clutch I believe um, they put a really flimsy bracket on these shifters that flexes a lot I think they do that to reduce noise and vibration but half the time you don't know what gate you're going into or what gear you're going into and it's quite aggravating and it just it, it's irritating because everything else in this car is so great and has worked so well and then you're driving down the road and you do happen to make your 2-3 shift and then sometimes you go 2 and then 5 fifth grade right into 5th gear and sometimes the gates just don't reset or whatever and you're stuck in neutral trying to get into any gear and whenever I read these, heard this online I thought well you know these people just haven't really driven a standard much and you know I'd I've raced top loader four speeds so I know what it takes to shift hard and sometimes you know you heard the old stories about the top loaders actually breaking people's arms and I never had a top loader that shifted as hard as what this thing does and also you have to have this clutch absolutely to the floor I mean buried into the floor to shift gears and that makes it pretty tough when you're trying to power shift and I don't know, that's probably one of the first things I'm going to get in this car then is going to be a new shifter. I know Barton and I um, can't remember the name of the other company, GCW or CGW or whatever. I know they're both established brands. I just I haven't paid any attention to that sort of thing for a long time. But... Definitely the first thing I'm going to do to this car is probably try a different shifter and then figure something out on the clutch. I'm not sure what. I I know it's got a hydraulic slave cylinder and I just, I don't know, there's something something about that that's just goofy. It needs to be changed, whether the ratios need changed or what, I'm not sure. But I'm going to do a little research on that. But I'm not, I mean, I've taken this thing out a couple times and run it through the gears but I'm not going to do that all the time I, never, I was never one to do that on the street but yeah, you, know, you have to try it out once in a while anyways but definitely a 2-3 shift is pretty tough because you can't bias that at all towards third gear you have to pretty much go straight to third gear and if you do sometimes you hit right on the gate to first gear and you miss a shift you don't go into first gear luckily but you don't go into third either so it's got to, it might just be a simple fact that it's different from what I'm used to racing a, you know most of the when I was racing in the past like I said I used a top loader and that top loader would um, usually had like a Hurst Oh, competition plus, and then later on, Mr. Gasket V-Gate, which was really easy to shift. You just yanked on the, yanked up on the gate and did the 3-4 shift with it. But, 
other than that, it's been a really nice car. Surprisingly good gas mileage. I made a fairly long trip with it. Not real long, 30, 40 miles. And with no very few stops. And it was even kind of a windy road. And I got 25.2 miles a gallon according to the mileage computer. I don't know how accurate that is. And driving to work, which is 8 miles down the hill and 8 miles up a hill every day. So it, no matter what I have gets bad mileage on that. I'm still averaging 17.2 and I did actually fill it up and check it and it hit spot on 17.2 so apparently the mileage computer is pretty close. So I don't know, nice car. Of course week after I bought it my refrigerator blew up so I really needed a truck at that point. <laughs> so I don't know, overall I'm pretty satisfied with the car. It runs good, handles good enough for me and you know, I like it and while I was here I thought I was trying to find some pictures of my 68 Mustang and I couldn't really find any other than this one right here a picture of the engine bay this would be about 1984 I put this together in 1984 I was 16 years old actually tomorrow I'm going to turn 46 it's hard to believe it's been that long ago 30 years but that was a mild 351 Cleveland that I had in that car and drove that to school every day when I was in high school. Had the, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think at this time I had the Lenati Bracket Master 2 cam in it. The, uh, the one I think, it, I can't remember the specs anymore, it's been 30 years, but I know the lift was somewhere around the 560s, 50 thousandths duration, it's probably 230s, 240s, somewhere in there. And after I did a little bit of tuning with it, um, I took it to the drag strip, put some slicks on it, dropped the exhaust down, and um, this, of course, I always raced eighth mile and ran a 761 right off the bat in the eighth mile, which 1984, 16 year old kid, that was a pretty good running car today. You know, everybody has 10 second cars on the street, eighth or quarter mile 10 second cars, but back then that was pretty decent. And I've got Edelbrock F351 dual plane intake on that. I was actually using a points distributor at this point. Not long after this, I converted this over to DuraSpark 2 and actually. Um, from about 1985 to probably 1991, I did a lot of conversions on 60s muscle cars to DuraSpark 2 using, of course I didn't use the Mallory distributor, but the Motorcraft distributor, converting them over to DuraSpark. Just about everybody around here back then, I converted their cars over to that. And let's see, the carburetor on that was a um, 3310 dash one which was the first dash number that had the jet plate of course you take that and you throw it away and you put a real metering block on it and built that little stabilizer bar across there because they were known for wanting to collapse in the center even though they did have the, the triangular bars that went that way and it was a pretty nice car I drove it on the street and then I drag raced it after that until about 1986 or 1996 I mean and then that's when I decided to sell it and then that's when I started building my Capri that's over here and over there and mainly sold this car because the Cleveland was getting fast enough at that time it was probably running maybe 690s in the eighth mile and had four wheel drum brakes on the thing and a stock suspension with all the bump steer and everything. It was getting a little bit tough to drive it down the drag, the really rough drag strip that I raced at, and there was a pretty short runoff at the end. I was getting kind of hard to get the thing stopped. So rather than cut this car up, which only had about 54,000 miles on it, I sold it to a guy, and I'll, I sold it, and I don't think it's left, left his garage ever since. And that's when I built the Capri. So, 1996 up until now, I haven't had an actual good, nice street car. And, I don't know, I just, that's about all I gotta say, I guess.